we gathered together celebrating the harvest season filled with Facts About the Fall Equinox by Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Linda Bleck. We gather together celebrating the harvest season. For my family who gathers together many times each year, how lucky we are, and for my children, David and Sarah, my. During early autumn in the northern part of the earth, chipmunks pack their cheeks full of seeds to store in underground burrows. Red fox pups hunt for rodents and fruit to eat, then bury leftovers to dig up when food is scarce. Beavers store twigs sti and sticks under water to chew when ice covers their pond. As the sun appears lower in the southern sky each day, the sun rises later each morning and sets earlier each evening. Days grow shorter, the nights cooler, and the growing season ends. Time to prepare for winter! Black bears gobble honey, grubs, fruits, and roots, building layers of fat for the cold days ahead. People pick purple grapes, yellow squash, orange pumpkins, and crisp red apples. They husk corn, gather nuts, rake cranberries, and enjoy the harvest season. But today, there's little need for them to stockpile food for winter, as the animals do. Ships, trucks, and cargo planes transport it from parts of the world where fruits and vegetables are still growing. When it's winter in the northern hemisphere, food is brought in from the southern hemisphere where it's summer. Fall, autumnal, equinox, day and night equal. So fall nights are longer than days. Days getting shorter, time to harvest. Winter solstice is the shortest day with the least sunshine. Winter, nights longer than days, days getting longer, spring is coming. Spring equinox or vernal equinox, day and night are equal. Spring, days longer than nights, days getting longer, seedlings sprout. Summer solstice is the longest day with the most sunshine. And then summer days are longer than nights, days getting shorter and crops growing and then it starts all over again. Different seasons are caused by the tilt of the earth as it moves around the sun. When the northern part of the earth tilts towards the sun, the north gets lots of sunshine and it's summer there. When the northern part of the earth tilts away from the sun, the north gets less sunshine and it's winter. Between summer and winter, around September 21st, the sun crosses the equator and shines equally on both the northern and southern parts of the earth. On that day, in the northern part of the world, summer ends and autumn begins. Day and night have equal hours all over the world. For many, the autumnal equinox signals a time to harvest crops. Each crop has its own growing season. Most seedlings sprout with the cool spring rain and thrive under the warm summer sun. Sunshine helps a plant's leaves make the food that is necessary for the plant to grow. When autumn arrives, days are cooler. Plants can no longer make the food they need and the growing season ends. Time to gather in the crops. Fruits and vegetables that ripen by autumn must be harvested before winter's freezing weather destroys them. 3,000 years ago, no one knew how to plant seeds to produce a bountiful harvest. Cave dwellers picked berries, collected nuts, dug roots, and gathered wild plants. Winters were hard for them. They had to live on what they gathered and stored in the fall. About 10,000 years ago, where Syria and Turkey are today, tribes learned how to grow wheat and barley from seeds. How exciting it must have been to plant one seed and produce a stalk with many. 8,000 years ago in Egypt, people discovered the warm climate was perfect for farming. The Nile River provided water, and once each year, its floodwaters deposited rich black fertile soil on both sides. Plants grew in abundance. Gradually, farming spread to Asia. About 5,000 years ago, people grew food in a crescent-shaped area where Iraq is now. The Tigris River and small streams that fed it turned valleys into a fertile crescent of rich farmlands. Each autumn, in many lands, men, women, and children worked all day and even at night under the light of a bright harvest moon. They cut rice, threshed wheat, and gathered bundles of barley. A good harvest meant plenty of food to eat in the fall and more to store for the days when food was scarce. Time to rejoice and have fun after hard, backbreaking work. Over the centuries, people celebrated plentiful harvest and passed down traditions at different times, in different places, and in different ways. All over the world, harvest celebrations from the past are still being carried on today. Jewish families have gathered together at harvest time for over 3,000 years to celebrate Sukkot. 
During this eight-day festival of Thanksgiving, they wave palm, myrtle, and willow branches, then point them in all directions to show that God is everywhere. Some Jews built a hut called a sukkah, like the ones farmers once stayed in, to be near their crops during a busy harvest. They decorate the huts with fruits and vegetables. They invite friends and families to share food and friendship. People in southern India have celebrated Pongal, a four-day rice festival for over 2,000 years. On the first day, they decorate their front doors with rice flower designs and give thanks to the rain gods. On the second day, they cook Pongal, a sweet rice pudding, and offer some to the sun god. On the third day, they honor their cattle to thank them for pulling the plows. The fourth day, family and friends gather on riverbanks to dance and enjoy a bountiful feast, including, of course, fresh harvested rice. The people of Japan have held rice festivals for about 2,000 years. In spring, girls dressed in kimonos plant rice, while musicians play bells, drums, and flutes. In summer, they hold a lantern festival to express their joy as the rice ripens. When fall comes, they celebrate the rice harvest with parades and dragon dance. During their moon viewing ceremony, people sing while watching shadows on the full moon. Many think the shadows show a rabbit making rice cakes. For over 700 years, Nigerians have held a fall festival to give thanks for yams, the first crop harvested. On the night before the festivities begin, the old wrinkled yams are thrown out. The next day, new yams are offered to the gods and ancestors in appreciation of of a successful harvest. Dancers wear raffia skirts and masks that portray turtles, lizards, trees, and the sun or moon to celebrate a cycle of nature. Hundreds of years ago, the English believed that the spirit of their wheat lived in the last bundle they cut. In each field, they twisted it into the shape of a doll. Since they called wheat corn, these dolls were named corn dollies. They were hung in barns or churches during the winter, then plowed back into the earth in the spring to ensure a good harvest in autumn. People still make corn dollies just for fun. Pilgrims from England arrived in America in the fall of 1620, too late to plant crops. That winter, many died from hunger and sickness. When spring came, the surviving pilgrims sowed wheat seeds. A Native American tribe, the Wampanoags, showed them how to plant maize or corn. The following autumn, the harvest was fruitful. The pilgrims planned a celebration to share this blessing. Wampanoag men hunted and killed five deer to bring to the feast. The pilgrims stayed busy too. Men brought ducks, geese, turkeys, fish, and oysters. Women prepared cornbread and cranberries while children turned meat on spits over an open fire. Games and feasting lasted three days. Bountiful harvests have been celebrated since earliest times. People all over the world still celebrate a fruitful year of farming with fun feasts and festivals. They enjoy corn, rice, yams, apples, pumpkins, cranberries, and other fruits and vegetables of the harvest season. Autumn, with its brilliant colors and delicious gifts of nature, offers friends and families a time to gather together and give thanks for all their blessings. Equinox Facts An equinox occurs when the center of the sun appears directly over the equator and shines equally on both the northern and southern parts of the earth. Day and night are equal all over the world. Equinox means equal night. On that day, everywhere on earth, there are 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark. There are four seasons in each year. A a day called the vernal equinox welcomes the first day of spring. The summer solstice, the longest day of the year, tells us summer has arrived. The autumnal equinox greets autumn. And winter begins on the winter solstice, the shortest day. We enjoy four seasons because the earth tilts. Around May 21st, the spring equinox... The sun appears to cross the equator as it moves from south to north. Day and night are equal all over the world. It's the first day of spring, time to plant our seeds. Around June 21st, the summer solstice, the northern part of the world receives the direct rays of the sun. We have the longest day of the year, the first day of summer, when our plants grow. Around September 21st, the autumnal equinox, the sun appears to cross the equator again as it moves from north to south. Day and night are equal all over the world. It's the first day of autumn, time to start harvesting. The full moon nearest to the first day of autumn, or the autumnal equinox, is called the harvest moon. Its bright light allowed people to harvest crops late in the night. After the autumnal equinox, the northern part of the world receives only the indirect rays of the sun. The days get shorter and the nights longer until the winter solstice around December 21st, then the cycle begins again. 
Um, prove the sun rises due east on both equinoxes. So here's a little experiment that you could do. Um, the best time to do it would have been between September 15th and 20th. So it's too late this year, but you could do it next year if you want to take a screenshot and try that. Um, and here's something you can do around the 21st of September, October, November, December, January, February, and March. So we already passed October 21st if you're listening to this on the day I'm publishing it, but you could try it on November 21st. So check your calendar and September and March go out on the exact equinox days. At the same time of day that you made your original sketch, go to your chosen spot with a pencil, compass, and one copy of the sketch and check your compass and face east. Sketch the position of the sun. So in September, you should be facing the sun. In December, the sun should be slightly to your right. In March, you should be facing the sun. Um, write the date and time on each sketch. And after March, put your sketches in order from September to March. Um, do your sketches show the sun rising in due east in both September and March? On both the autumnal equinox and the vernal equinox, the sun rises due east and sets due west. You can, could also do this experiment in the evening by facing west instead of east, following the directions above, but change east to west and reverse north and south. Um, here is another one you could screenshot to see how the tilt of the earth makes the seasons. Um, here's how you could make equinox corn muffins to share. There's a recipe. Um, how to make Nigerian harvest masks and celebrate. Again, you could take a screenshot if this is something you want to do. Um, and you could write about other harvest festivals. So here are some other harvest festivals you could research or write about if you wanted to find out more. China's Moon Festival, Inca's Corn Harvest Celebration, Ancient Egyptian Harvest Parade, Ancient Greek Harvest Festival, Hoppy Corn Dance, Iroquois Green Corn Dance, Germany's Oktoberfest, the Cherokee Harvest Festival, Czech Republic Harvest Celebration, Barbados Sugar Cane Festival, Japan's Labor Thanksgiving Day. Um, you could find other harvest celebrations held throughout the world and write about them or read other books about them. Um, and here are some books for further reading and some websites for further reading. Thanks for listening.